Good morning. Good morning. It's just about 5 a.m. here in Calgary, and this is a back to basics little session for you. Um, it's going to be about 15 minutes or so, and we're going to start and mostly be on the floor. We'll come up to lunge for a little bit of it. So have a blanket or something if you need support underneath your knee. Also have a bolster handy for one of the twists that we're going to do on the floor. All right, so we're going to begin on our backs. And you'll be here. And I want you just to notice yourself breathing. And I just need to adjust my mic because it feels kind of funky on my shirt. There we go. And I want you just to feel yourself breathing. Now, depending on what time you're joining, for me, it's 5 a.m. You might be 7 or 6 or 4 or maybe in Europe, you're in the afternoon. Maybe you're watching this as a recording. So wherever you are in your day, your breath is really amazing at letting you know how it's gone so far, how you have been with your day, how your day has been with you. And in my case, my sleep, you know, so it's, it's, it's such a powerful, powerful tool. And I really try not to change it. I know that's sometimes impossible, but it's just interesting to feel and notice, like for real, how your body, or how my body in this case, tells the truth, yeah? Everything that is happening, it's right here under my skin. So with that, let's move into a butterfly. So watch my legs here. This is not Baddha Konasana with the feet coming together. The feet are going to stay in line with those hips. And then you're, well, maybe not. Maybe you're going to take them wider. And you're going to rotate your leg bones in the hip socket. That's the movement. The leg bone is moving in the hip socket. There you go. And what I find really fascinating is if I take my hands right into the crease of where my leg meets my pelvis, then I can feel my hip flexors. Now, for a moment, just lift your, your knee towards your belly and feel that hip flexor. So notice where it is. Now, as you move the legs into that rotation motion, notice if those hip flexors want to fire and they don't need to and they ought not to. But what often happens when we don't have the control or the stability or the coordination, then the hip flexors will kick in to try and support that leg movement down into um, against gravity or with gravity rather. And so if you, if you want to play the game of let's improve your movement, then only go as far as those hip flexors don't fire. And then when you do that, you might only go halfway maybe a quarter. Maybe it's on the way up that you notice those hip flexors really kicking in, yeah? And so if you let that go, then what starts to happen around your pelvis or your pelvic floor or your jaw or your back or between your shoulder blades, yeah? Okay, and then come on up. All right, let's take one leg straight and one knee to your belly. We're gonna do a slight twist. Shoulder girdle stays on the ground. And let's move into that twist. It becomes really, really cool, you know, because I get a lot of people asking me, what do I do for my neck? And what do I do for my wrists? Or what do I do for my fill in the blank? And what's so fascinating is that if we simply just move better, let's go to the other side, then so many issues clear up. And so it's not like there's like the magic exercise for the neck. What becomes so cool is how when you do some stuff in your hips, your neck can sometimes release and same with your jaw or you do some stuff in your shoulder and then your hamstrings let go or you stand taller, right? Because the holding and bracing patterns those patterns that are under your level of awareness but are doing such a great job at holding you together, okay, come onto your back. They don't have to do that anymore because now the proper areas are moving properly. 
Okay, so this is the one we're gonna get into utilizing a bolster. You're gonna take one leg to the sky and rotate that leg bone and place the ankle on the knee. Okay, now I'm gonna be blocking your view in just a moment here. So let me show you what's gonna happen. Is I've got the bolster here and we're gonna take this into a twist. Now the shoulder girdle, the shoulder girdle needs to stay on the ground. Yeah, so the shoulders aren't gonna lift up. Notice the hip flexors if you wanna play that game. And then you're gonna take the bolster just wherever makes sense. So I actually like putting the bolster in at a place where it's actually well ahead of my end range. So I can, this time in the morning, I'm coming down to about here. Yeah, so I'm actually making it to the ground. Now, what's interesting is when I bring this in and just go here, it's just a different experience. So I don't have to go to my full end range to get benefit. In fact, I can explore so much at this angle of the movement. Remember, it's not about a stretch. The stretch doesn't indicate if you're doing anything right or anything wrong. It's a sensation. Okay, bring that up. Okay, other side, ankle comes off the knee. And then other side, I'm gonna angle this way so you've got a bit, of, a bit better of a view. Leg comes up first, rotate the leg bone, bring the ankle onto the knee, and then we can take it into a twist. Easy breathing. Yeah. And simply just notice what you notice and what you're aware of. Great. And then coming back up. And then let that go and take the bolster away. Good. Now for this one, I'm going to show it to you um, here and then I'm going to also show you a version on the wall. You're going to bring one leg up and then bring another leg up. And you're going to take one leg over and then follow the other. And then this leg comes back up and then over. So the movement is one leg leads as much as you can, then the other leg follows along with the pelvis. Yeah. And so the shoulder girdle stays on the ground. Now sometimes that can be a little bit too much. So this is where utilizing the wall can be really useful. So you can have your feet on the wall, slide one foot along the wall, and then slide the other one along the wall. And then up, and then other way. Now as you come around with the second leg, really pay attention to your pelvis helping drive that rotation. So pay attention to the pelvis rib cage connection. So you're just moving left and right. Feeling the connection between your leg, your pelvis, and your ribs, maybe your shoulder. As always, there ought not to be any increases of pain or strain. And if there are, it probably means you're going a little too far. Okay, and then bring that to a close. And for a moment, just lay there, whether your feet are against the wall or your feet are on the floor now. Just lay there and now notice where you're at. Now that you've done what you've done to your body. Great, and let's roll on over and come on up into kneeling. And let's come into a lunge. So from here, we're gonna come out one foot forward and keeping that pelvis as level, I mean, not level like, you're obviously gonna drop down a little bit, but see if you can keep it from coming into a big back bend, like through your you can actually see it with my shirt here nicely. Think more about generating the movement between your hips and your knees. Yeah? Good. And then bring your hands here. So the middle finger is underneath your chin. And let's take a twist 
toward the front leg. Lovely, and then coming back, great. And then you're gonna let the arms come down and take a side bend. Now, one of the instructions I heard years ago that I really love is imagine that you're this teapot. The water is coming out of your armpit, down the inner side of your arm, down your fingers and into a teacup on the ground. That's it, and then come back up. Good, and then other side. Okay, now so from here, we bring the hands together, middle finger under the chin, and let's take that twist. Oops, no, nope, I missed something. Let's start to move forward. And then come on back. Now let's come into the twist. Really good. And then come on back. All right, ready? And then take a side bend. Great, okay, come back up. All right, now from here, come into not quite a child's pose. Bum stays up, hands forward. And then let's take the hands out so that you're angling, doing a side bend. And then coming back. Nice, and then let's come to a full child's pose. So you can have your arms out forward or behind you. Totally depends on what you want. And you can take your hands underneath your forehead if you'd like. And just come back to that breath. Now noticing what it is that you feel. And then coming back up, grabbing your bolster one more time. Let's have a seat on your bolster. All right, now from here, you can be in a kneeling position too if you'd prefer. Now come back and notice your inhale and your exhale. Feel how your breath is now. And then close your eyes, bring your palms together and just take a moment and just consider what would you like for the rest of your day as an intention, coming from this feeling that you currently have. And then say it to yourself as if it's already happened. Awesome. All right, so mm, we will see you tomorrow morning. Have a great rest of your day and keep checking back to that breath. Take good care.